Would you like to learn how to make an adorable little upcycled basket like this one out of the boxes that aluminum cans come in? I'm Hannah and together with Nemo we make upcycled aluminum can moving mosaics like the ones on the wall that you see behind me. We also do other forms of upcycling including using boxes like this. This is actually a pretty easy little project that you could do in about an hour or so and you only need a few materials. So of course there's the box. You're going to need a pencil and a ruler and an exacto knife although you could also do this with scissors. And lastly I like to use a cutting board. Mine's kind of old and worn out but it protects the table surface. You can also use a couple layers of cardboard. Uh, just make sure that you're not cutting directly into your table if you decide to use an exacto knife. Open up the box by ripping open all the seams. Okay, I'm going to cut off these extra pieces. This section is not that useful because it already has this cut out, so I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to cut off these two flaps. Okay, so what we're left with is a pretty good looking solid piece of cardboard. Measure half inch strips and mark with my pencil. I'm going to start on this side, mark every half an inch. And then from here, you could either draw lines where you made the marks so that you know where to cut with your scissors, or you can just line up the marks and cut it with your exacto knife. I prefer to do several cuts instead of just bearing down and trying to cut all the way through all at once. What we're aiming for is eight strips from that piece and then you can set this one aside. You don't need the, the piece that has the torn glue section. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. I'm going to start on this side because there is just a little bit of a tear right here um, from the handhold. I'm going to start measuring right at this seam where the box had folded. Looks like I could get an extra one just in case I mess up. Do the same thing over here every half an inch and then cut them the same way. Okay, I'm gonna discard this piece because it was already, it already had the, the cut in it. Now I have eight from one side of the box and I actually got nine from the other side of the box and I did indeed kind of mess one up. So I can set that one aside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've got eight on each side. Oh, and I forgot one other thing that is going to come in handy is either some clothespins or some binder clips are going to help you as you work. We're going to decide if we want to have the color on the outside or the inside. When I made this basket, I decided to put it on the outside. So I'm going to do this one the opposite of that. You need to lay out your eight strips. And then your other eight strips are going to weave through the other direction. I'm showing you how to do this on a table. Um, sometimes when I make baskets, I will do it on the floor so that I can use my feet as my third and fourth hand. Not everybody has as much dexterity with their feet, but what, would, what you would do is you would hold one end with your foot if you need to. This, this can be a little bit tricky at the beginning, but I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to go over, under, over, under, over, under, first of all. Okay. And then I'm going to try to center it like that. It doesn't have to be too perfect because you can do a lot of adjustment later. Okay, the next piece I'm going to weave through the opposite. So I'm going to get it started where instead of going over this one, I'm going to go under this one, and then I'm just going to continue the pattern over, under, over, under. I'll just keep going. So the way this one is woven through is going to be exactly the opposite of, of the, the way the first one was woven through. 
and this is where it's just going to take a little bit of patience it might get a little scrambled but once you start to get them established you'll notice that because of the texture of the cardboard it will start to hold itself so i've got three and i'm just going to keep on going keep repeating the process and it's going to get a little easier as you go So now I have eight strips going each direction and they're, in, they're woven together in a basket weave pattern. You see how that almost already clings to itself? Now I'm gonna take the opportunity to organize these further and get them more centered and closer together. And all you have to do is just kind of pinch. Pinch and slide. You can go one direction and then the other and you can kind of pull and tug and try to get them lined up. Take out some of those gaps while also keeping everything centered. So there I did one direction and then I'm going to kind of start in the middle on this side, pull these in tighter and the other side. What I'm seeing here is that it's kind of lopsided. And the easiest way to correct that, I think, is gonna to be to just take this one and put it over here. So just as long as you're doing the opposite of the previous one in line, then it'll work out. Okay, that looks pretty good. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, you just want it to be somewhat even. That creates the base of your basket, and the next step was the hardest for me to originally grasp. When you're looking at it like this, it kind of feels like these are going to be your four corners. It, you instinctively almost want to like fold this side up and that becomes a side, but that's not how it works. What actually becomes your four corners is the centers of each side. Okay. So technically these points here are already forming the sides of your basket and your corners are in the middles. <laughs> I'm going to start with the center of this side. So I've got eight strips. I'm going to count four over from each side and that's the middle right there. And I am going to start weaving upwards from there, knowing that this is going to be my corner. This piece needs to go over this piece so that it ends up continuing the weave pattern. So Right here, this piece was going over, so the next thing it needs to do is go under this piece. You continue weaving in both directions by lifting up the piece next to it and putting it the opposite of wherever it was previously, if that makes sense. So like this piece goes over, this piece goes under, and this piece goes over. Okay, and here's where it's going to want to fall apart on you, but it's okay. And anytime you need to take a break or set it down, you can grab a clothespin and clip it right there and that'll hold it. I did one of the pieces from the middle on that side and I am going to do the same thing on this side. Then I will have established two of my corners. Okay, so I'm starting with the center on this side and I'm taking the one that's to my, my left of center and I'm weaving under, over, under, over, and then under the one that I did the same thing on this side, okay? And um, right there is where the top edge of the basket is. So like the basket is going to have a square bottom and a round top. And so this is establishing where that round top is gonna to be. I'm just gonna put a clothespin right there for now so that I can do this on all the sides. So next I'm gonna try this side. And so my center is right here. I'm four from the left and four from the right. And I'm gonna take the one on my right and I'm gonna to go to my left, over, 
under, over, under. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side with the one that's to the left of the one I used previously. Over, under, over, under, okay. And then I end up with this side and I'm gonna put a clothespin there. Now you can see that we are establishing two of the four corners right there created by those center strips intersecting or overlapping and going a different direction. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm starting with the gap between the four on the left and the four on the right and I'm going to take the one on my right and move it towards the left by going over, under, over, under. And then the side that I previously started, I'm gonna grab the one that's on my left of that gap. And it's gonna go under, over, under, over, under. And I'll put a clothes pin right there. Okay, so this is what it's looking like. It does look a little bit crazy, but now we have a corner right here, a corner right here, and a corner right here. So it's time to do the last corner. And what you gotta do is just kind of study it and make sure that you're grabbing the right pieces by counting. One, two, three, four. So this is the fourth one that needs to go. It's already going over that one. It can go under, over, under. And then this one is the one to the left of center and we're gonna move it towards the right. Over, under, over, under. And I only have three clothes pins, so I'm going to use the binder clip as the last one. This is the opportunity to make sure that you grab the right ones. <laughs> and the way that I double check is by looking at the bottom and making sure that it's symmetrical. I've got the two corners here and the two corners here. If I look at it, I need to make sure that I'm seeing the same number of squares or diamonds between each one. So one, two, three, four, that's right. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. You know if you've maybe grabbed the wrong one, if you end up with say three diamonds before the corner and then five on the other side, and then you're gonna end up with a trapezoid. Begin the process of creating the edge. And remember that this can be adjusted as you go or even adjust it at the end. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it right now, but what I need to do is take, take the binder clip off of the last one that I was working on. And I'm gonna begin by folding this one down and back at a right angle to the other one, okay? And then I'm gonna fold the one that it's crossing over the same way down and back at a right angle. Okay, so that is the first step in figuring out where your edge is. I'm gonna go ahead and put a binder clip right there. And so I'm gonna do that to all four places where I clipped it. And I'm just gonna kinda hold it and massage it to get it so I can see what's going on. And then I'm gonna fold this one down at a right angle and then that one down at a right angle. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, and clip it, okay. So that is going to establish the edges. So you're gonna work all the other pieces that are hanging out to that same height. Start by looking at where you have your corners. I'm gonna pick this corner. I'm gonna continue the over, under, over, under from there at a diagonal. First the one on the left. And when I get right up near the binder clip right there, then I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before, to fold it back, okay? Kind of the equal and opposite on the other side. 
and now I'm near the closed pinned one. So I can do the same thing and you just sort of adjust it. So I done the one to one side of this binder clip and then I did the one to the one side of this closed pin and that leaves me one more in the middle right here. Make sure that nothing came unwoven from before. Okay, and I folded that one there. Okay, so that is kind of getting our edge right there. Now you gotta repeat this process between all the peaks that you already established and clipped. And if the clothespins or the binder clips are in your way, you know, you can take them off. I'm gonna switch out one of the clothespins for a binder clip. Um, you could probably just take them completely off at this point, but it does help when you're learning to have, hold everything where it needs to be. So now I folded all the edge pieces at right angles to each other, and this is what we have right now. I'm gonna take off the clips, the clothespins, and everything is gonna pretty much hold its place. The next step is to weave in all the ends and tighten everything as you go. I like to start with the ends that are a little bit longer versus the ends that are a little bit shorter. So the way that you weave in the ends, where it's folded, I'm going to tuck it in, okay? to one of the basket weaves there. And then the other side is also gonna get tucked in, right there, okay. So do you see how I did that? Okay, let me do it again. Let me tuck this one in right here. And then I'm gonna tuck this one in right here. So it's essentially the same process all the way around. The way that you would tighten it is, so you have this one that's still sticking out because it was long enough to, right? And you could kind of follow where it goes. So it's on the, it's on the outside right here. I follow it to the inside and it's this piece right here. And what I do is I just drag my finger and pull on the tab and that tightens it, okay? And it's gonna kind of change the location of your original fold, but that's okay, it's still gonna look good. And what I do is I just sort of systematically work my way around, starting with those longer pieces and just tighten, pull and tighten by just kind of pulling with your finger on the inside, dragging kind of up towards the top edge of the basket and pushing down with your thumb and pulling on the tab at the same time. And like a lot of what I'm describing here, if you just hear me describe it, it might not make sense, but I think if you're actually giving it a try, it'll make sense to you in the moment. At least I hope it will. Sometimes they might be a little too short. It's okay. This still look good. Sometimes it's kind of hard to get a grip. You can always kind of undo it in order to get a grip on it and then put it back. Okay. All right. Now from here, you have a couple of options. You can either just cut off these long pieces right where they are or if they're long enough, you can tuck them into the next weave of the basket. Okay, so if you wanted to cut off the ends, all you do is just go right up to the edge of the bit that's sticking out and you just cut it off. I got them all. Okay, and then you can kind of just like shape it to give it more of a flat base and um, make the sides a little bit more vertical if you want. If you have any questions, please drop them below and don't forget to save this post 
so that you can reference it later when you're working on your own basket.